That's interesting. You know, we're, I, I think we're all uh, of the mind now that, you know, with the progress over the past, you know, five years' time, we're, we're aiming for complete responses. We're aiming for long-lasting durable responses. We've totally adjusted our expectations um, such that a promising new regimen, you know, a PD-1-based combination, a, a BRAF mech, you know, plus another agent triplet needs to, you know, produce a 20-plus percent complete response rate or, or we're not going to, you know, follow that up. It's a, it's a fascinating shift, and I think the, you know, the folks in the community who've, uh, you know, uh, begun to see these therapies emerge are getting that sense also that we're really starting to shift our expectations for patients. Well, this has been a great discussion. Uh, we've heard and discussed a lot of the information um, that's emerged just within the past year's time in terms of new treatment strategies as well as future directions. Um, to close, I'd like to get uh, final thoughts from each of you. Um, Dr. Gonzalez, you know, what, what, do you, what do you see as being, um, you know, the, this, this near-term, um, you know, next breakthrough uh, in the field? Um, you know, we, we discussed a lot of these uh, currently available treatments. I guess to, to start, I'd like to put it a little bit in perspective. As you said, in the last five years, there have been either 12 new drugs or combinations or indications approved in, in melanoma, and before that, we had nothing really. So there's a lot of uh, work that remains to be done, a lot of uh, schedule and dosing and biomarker and other targets and resistant mechanism sequencing, et cetera. So I think it's an exciting time for melanoma, and it will there'll be research and progress, I think, at a, at a pace like we've never seen before. Well, I think the take-home point there is we're, we're still doing research in this field. We're not, we're not, we're not done. Uh, Jason, you've done a lot of work, uh, you know, in your early career here in terms of, you know, real unmet need populations. We didn't talk very much today about that, um, you know, unique histologies and so on. Um, you know, what, what's, your, what's your hope or sense, uh, you know, that in terms of where we could make impact? Uveal melanoma, acral mucosals, these right. types. Right, so uveal melanoma is a particular interest of mine in an area where unfortunately we have not made the kind of progress we've seen with cutaneous melanoma. But I wonder if starting to get this broader understanding that we have things like the inflamed tumor microenvironment and how that applies to PD-1 and other checkpoint blockade, start to apply that into uveal melanoma, these larger genomic approaches that have really helped us to you know, better understand BRAF inhibitor therapy, but what kind of targeted therapies could we then apply in that uveal space? Uh, I think I think really we'll start to turn things and we'll really start to make progress. Similarly, um, you know, the, these drugs have some activity in mucosal and acral melanomas, so it's really, so it's somewhat less, but that's also an area where we can start to think perhaps a specific biology around that. I think broadly speaking, I, I want to second this, is we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. So we just have these tools now, and this is just the tip of the iceberg, and we have so many other things that we need to learn about the drugs that we already have, yeah. and the future, the pipeline is just, you know, almost you can't understand everything that we have the potential to do. So we really do need to continue to accrue patients to clinical trials, and if we don't do that, we're basically saying that our 20% IPI long-term survival is good enough or our combination is good enough despite the fact that half the patients end up with high-grade toxicity. And I, I really push that message out that we really need to continue to do this research. I agree. So, Dr. Weber, I want your closing comments. I also want you to take an additional, uh, you know, burden on your shoulders. We haven't discussed adjuvant use of ipilimumab. Um, and I think this audience is probably aware of the fact that very recently the FDA approved um, adjuvant ipilimumab on the basis of the URTC trial, 10 milligrams per kilogram, which is higher than what we use in standard practice in the overt metastatic setting. Um, positive relapse free survival result that we looked at now a year and a half ago, um, still don't know about overall survival impact. So, so, so two, two tasks for you. One is how do you think about that data? Does it move the field forward beyond our long plateau of, you know, kind of an unsatisfying standard in interferon? Um, and then give me your, your, your forward looking, you know, what's the game changer? On the adjuvant scene, I think we are making incremental progress. I think that even though the RFS data show a statistically significant and moderate benefit, I think that you're going to see a significant or more striking advantage in survival mm -hmm. to ipilimumab at 10 per kilo versus placebo and ultimately in the ECOG 1609 trial sure. versus interferon. I would suspect over the next couple of years it'll get a fair bit of traction in the community. Docs will go take the plunge and use ipi at 10 per kilo in spite of what I would estimate to be oh, a third, one in three, grade three, four IRE. Uh, side effect rate, mm -hmm. but a lot of that's going to be biochemical, pancreatitis, hepatitis, mm -hmm. endocrinopathies, those are easily overcome and treated. But yes, there will be some more toxicity, but I agree in exchange there'll be some benefit in survival that I think is significant. Then of course in a couple of years we'll know the results of the 238 trial of nivolumab versus ipilimumab. Yeah, yeah. 
I, on the basis of my own experience with both drugs in pilot adjuvant mm -hmm. trials, I have a suspicion that Nevo is going to look better than Ipi. Mm -hmm. And the next frontier is what we've already piloted when I was at Moffitt and which will continue at NYU, which is combo mm -hmm. adjuvant therapy. But because of the toxicity, we've flipped the doses, giving one of Ipi and mm -hmm. three of Nevo, mm -hmm. which is very well tolerated with a pretty good track record, admittedly in a small study. So I think that we're going to go from, we've gone from interferon, we'll go to Ipi, we'll go to Nevo, and eventually uh, end up at Ipi plus Nevo over the next five years. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to where are we going in metastatic treatment? I think we're going to see triple combinations. Yeah. And, I, you know, on the one hand, scientifically fascinating, extremely complex, with paradoxically a bar that's now so high, it's going to be very difficult to get combinations approved. Right. You're going to need to see major incremental advantages, which I think you probably will see with some of the drugs my colleagues have mentioned. But um, they're also going to be very expensive. Mm. So pharmacoeconomics is also going to play a huge role in what we do. Right now, I would estimate that the cost of Ipi plus Nevo therapy for a year is about $250,000. So I would ask, where does this all end? Well, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take the prerogative of, of making a closing comment, which is, you know, our colleagues in lymphoma uh, for years have developed a concept of, you know, concoctions of therapy that are highly effective can be administered in the short term and induce remissions and then watch. And I would argue that our ambitions are high enough now, I think we actually can start to think about these higher order combinations with a goal of durations of some number of months of induction therapy and, and stop, either with complete or, or deep partial responses. Um, I think that's the sustainable uh, path, but of course we have a ways to go before we have any notion that we've got the confidence um, you know, to be able to, uh, to, to move to that. But that, I think that, that's the way we're going to uh, make this ultimately a strategy that, that can play in the long term and, and be uh, cost manageable. Well, on behalf of our panel, uh, we thank you for joining us, and we hope you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative.